don't cry. You do, you do not deserve to cry. Depression doesn't rob you of the choice. It tricks you into making the wrong one. Look at yourself in the mirror and you truly look at yourself, warts and all. I just walked out of the house bald naked. Sorry. That makes a difference. I'll also pose in front of the mirror. One of the most important things to treat depression is drink your water, is what I'm trying to say. I felt my anxiety and depression creeping up on me. And by creeping up, it was there. And I was distracting myself and I was taking steps, I was processing, I was acknowledging, I was doing everything you were meant to do. And it still became too much. Oh God. I was feeling pressurized, I am feeling pressurized. I was feeling, am, I need to change that word, I am feeling down, I'm feeling quite depressed, quite sad. Uh, you, and I knew this was happening for a while. I knew the pressure was ever, ever mounting, the wave was getting ever higher, and I would distract myself. And I would acknowledge, and I would process, and I would do my steps. I would do what I need to do in order to take care of my mental health. So I'm never, yeah. It's one of those days. I couldn't get out of bed this morning. I didn't want to get out of bed. Depression and anxiety, one thing I constantly have to remind myself is I have the choice, the choice to find gratitude in anything in my day. And depression does not rob me of that choice. And the fact is I personally choose to stay in pain and I feel like such a hypocrite so much of the time when I get to this point because I profess, I profess acknowledgement, I profess wellness and mental health. Don't cry. You do, you do not deserve to cry. You are not making this into some type of pissy party video. I choose to stay in my depressed state. Don't come for me if I say things wrong right now. We're in a heightened state of emotions. Chemically, biologically, my body changes. We are biometric organisms made up of nothing but chemicals. We are a brain in a meat suit and I choose to be sad. I choose not to get out of bed on time. I choose not to do my ice baths. I choose to fail. Depression, anxiety, your, your our current state does not rob us of choice. We rob ourselves of that, and that is why we stay depressed. That's why I stay depressed. I can't speak for anyone here. So this video is a public declaration. Something that I often say is that if you really want to make lasting change, have people acknowledge you and have people hold you accountable. If you can acknowledge the, the pain in yourself, you can work through it. So my first public declaration is I choose to not let depression win. I no longer can drink. I do not have time to waste that people think I'm cringe or I'm weird. Publicly declare that I will no longer waste my time and my energy and my insanity looking for people to accept me. But I also choose not to get down when it gets hard. If you can acknowledge the, the pain in yourself, you can work through it. It's not something you can avoid or jump over. It's something you have to go through. Depression doesn't rob you of the choice. It tricks you into making the wrong one. And I am sick and tired of tricking myself. You need to move. I might shave the mustache. One of the most important things to treat depression is being physical and is moving and exercise and yet when you suffer from depression you never feel like moving and you are stuck in a cycle in a maze where you are thinking that you are being safe by staying still and being docile and we make the mistake of wasting to feel 
motivated or driven or have the indication that it's time to get out of depression you you're never going to have like a signal saying yeah ding green lights time to go we're we're not going to be depressed anymore you need to fight that you start to understand that depression is a liar for a long time you will listen to it if you can acknowledge it the the pain in yourself you can work through it it's not something you can avoid or jump over it's something you have to go through it's not something i need to really overcome so in the wise words of mel robbins five four three two one. I'll probably need to clean this afterwards, which is never fun, because I have to do it bucket by bucket. Put the camera closer just because I want the connection to hopefully be there. Um, I'm not feeling great about my body, obviously, depression, but it's not always just about, you know, flexing and being narcissistic. A lot of the time it is, though, egocentric. It could also be I'm trying to show other men and women and lads and lasses that you know, they can feel good about their body from where they are and where they're going. <sighs> this is weird. I know it's weird, but I do cold training and cold, cold resistance. I will shock my brain. I would wear an ice pack to basically give myself a shock. For stress, depression, whatever your mental illness is, whether you g go seek professional help clinically, whether you take medication, whether you exercise, it is all so valid and you need to understand that whatever you are going through, it is, it is, it is, not, a, it is not a hindrance or a weakness, but acknowledging the fact that you need help is actually a strength. Being a pussy because I'm not putting myself in. I am very sad and I've had very dark thoughts. It is very easily, it is very easy to isolate yourself. But we need to make more concerted effort to re-engage with family, with friends, with community. We probably have friends right now that are super stressed and depressed. And we haven't heard from them in ages and it has nothing to do with you. It's the fact that if you don't communicate with them or just acknowledge that you are there, you might not realize you know that they are isolating themselves. I constantly isolate myself and there's a difference between isolation yourself and being in solitude. Solitude is one of the greatest, um, one of the greatest things I've ever had, knowing the difference between being alone and being lonely. I've developed so much as a person because I've put myself in solitude and self-reflection. But then I can't isolate myself when I need to be around people in order to acknowledge to myself that I am good enough for myself and for them. I think it's actually cheating because I put hot water in it. I will stay here and I will meditate. I'll reflect. This is, <laughs> this is my reflecting pool. Do I look cool? I wear this quite a lot, especially after the days when hilariously, not hilariously, eerily after I've been drinking to try and disassociate my need for it because I don't need alcohol. I know the steps to take, I just, I choose not to do it. Do you choose not to do things in your life that you know you should be? And do you do things that you know are wrong or bad? Like, it's okay to indulge have good food, be around good people, have good drinks. But when it becomes a crutch, that's when you're in a danger zone. But you need to acknowledge that in yourself. I love the fact I'm making content in my pool with my ice mask on for everyone to see. Why is the truth important to us? Truth about ourselves. It's a starting point. And then your true self is found in the uncomfortable place when you acknowledge your authentic self, the shitty person that you are. We look for growth and success and fame, love in comfortable places. But you can only find that through growth, which is discomforting, which is uncomfortable, which is tough. 
we need to be in a state of growth. Imagine swimming, learning to swim. There's a chance you'll drown, but you need to take that chance in order to grow. You can only start when you look at yourself in the mirror and you truly look at yourself, warts and all. I'll put that on later. I think it's, I think it's very distracting for me. That's anxiety right there. You have 24 hours with your brain every day. And that, that can get deep and dark and your brain will try and comfort you and dissuade you from doing things that you know you should be doing. Hard work is really all we can do. You can point the finger at everything that's happened to you in your life and say, you know, like, this has happened to me. I, I'm a victim. You could have had every horrific, horrible, destructive thing ever happen to you. But you make a choice whether or not you are a victim or you will be a victor. But I will never want to be acknowledged for that. And I will never want to be rewarded for overcoming those. They are not badges of honor. They are not badges of turmoil. That is my past and that will stay in my past as I move forward to become a better version of myself for the future. Every time something got hard, I quit. If I had to work harder than people, if I wasn't instantly good, I would quit. I ruined my career for so many years because I wouldn't work, I wouldn't practice, I wouldn't rehearse, I wouldn't learn. I had to be the best. I, I wanted to feel victory, but I wouldn't put in the work. And now I realize it is the journey, it's the process. And then I ruin everything. I ruin everything. We are so... We are so powerful and unique and yet if we're not special if we are not acknowledged as being special then a lot of us fold we are not special we are unique we are unique beings unique entities a unique voice but we are not special there are seven billion people on this planet it's a bit of a juxtaposition isn't it I need to get out and work because now I'm using you as an excuse. I'm also going to shave the mustache. Sorry. I am really glad no one can see into my back garden because I might have just walked out of the house bollock naked without even realizing. Get yourself out on those hard days. It's getting yourself out and active and your body moving. That makes a difference. I'll also pose in front of the mirror. Push past your limits. <laughs>